Hello students, welcome to AIMS India online classes. This is a chemistry session. Here we are discussing about the chapter periodic classification. In this session, we are going to see the special names given to the groups and periods in the modern periodic table. This concept we have started in the earlier session. For the common names or special names given to the certain groups we have seen in the earlier session, like uh, alkali metals which is given to first column or one year group elements in the periodic table and the second year group elements are called alkaline earth metals and the last 18th column or 8th year group elements are called noble gases these points in the earlier class we have seen even about halogens also we have completed there that is 17th column or 7th year group elements are called halogens now we are going to see some more some more special names given to the remaining periods and groups. Okay, let us continue that here. Among them, one is Chalcogens. The 16th column or 6th A group elements present in the modern periodic table are called as Chalcogens. What are those? 16th column, extreme right side, third column from the right. If you see those elements are oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium and polonium. These elements which are present in the 16th group or 6th A group are commonly called chalcogens. The term chalcogens was derived from the Greek word chalcos which means ore formers. Since they all can be, these all are being found in copper ores not only copper most of the metallic ores are available in the form of either oxides sulfides or selenides that is why these 16th, 16th column or 6a group elements are called ore formers because most of the metallic ores are available in the form of either oxides or sulfides so these are called ore formers or chalcogens their compounds are referred to as chalcogenides. Chalcogenides or chalcogenides they are called. Okay. Sixth A group elements are called chalcogens. The meaning of ch the word chalcogens is derived from the meaning ore formers because most of the metallic ores are available in the form of uh, either oxides, sulfides, or selenides in the earth crust. Based upon this reason, these 60A group elements are named as chalcogens. Okay. Next, nicogens. These are 15th column elements or also 50A group elements. They are nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, stibium, bismuth. These elements which are present in the 50A group of this periodic table or 15th group or 15th column of the periodic table are known as nicogens because some of these elements present in this group especially nitrogen can cause choking and a stifling sensation in the body. Yes, the inhalation of this nitrogen causes choking that means suffocation and even stifling sensation in the body because of this nature of these uh, uh, elements present in this 50A. These are specially called as nicogens. So these on combustion produces choke uh, the gases which cause choking. That is why these elements of 50A group elements are named as nicogens. The most important elements of this group are nitrogen which in its uh, diametric form is principal component of air isn't it nitrogen in its diatomic form that is in the gaseous form it is available around 78 percent in the atmosphere atmospheric air so it is one of the it is a most abundant gas in the atmospheric air nitrogen so it is important and phosphorus which like nitrogen is essential to all known forms of life 
on the second element which is very important in this group that is 50a group elements is uh, phosphorus which is uh, very important and essential to all the known forms of life because if you see the, uh, in the, our body these bones on these all contain phosphorus in them so it is also one of the essential element from this group of course remaining are also important but these two are most essential what are those two elements in this group nitrogen and phosphorus nitrogen is very important and it is existing in the most abundant condition in the atmospheric air around 78% of atmospheric air is nitrogen itself in its gaseous state and phosphorus it is in the living things almost all the living things contain this phosphorus okay that's about uh, nicogens which elements are called nicogens 50a group elements or 15th column elements in the modern periodic table are called as nicogens here they are extreme fourth column from the right side okay these group elements are called nicogens nitrogen phosphorus arsenic stibium and bismuth these are called nicogens because of their property to produce uh to cause this suffocation or choking right next uh, let us see one more group that is a uh, coinage metals in the periodic table first b group elements or 11th column elements from the left side so from the left side the 11th column elements which are here they are copper silver gold these 11th group elements are 1b group elements are called coinage metals because they were used in minting coins mostly not only for uh, jewelry these uh, these metals which are present in this 1b group are specially used for make minting coins based upon that usage these uh, metals present in this 1b are named specially as coinage metals okay these metals are malleable the main the important property of these metals for the usage to mint the coins is uh, malleability not only for minting coins these metals are also used for making ornaments isn't it copper silver gold are used in making of ornaments also so for the main property or the main importance of these metals for using into these minting coins and jewelry is uh, their malleability and ductility they have high malleability and high ductility what is meant by here malleability they can be beaten into sheets metals can be beaten into sheets the property by which metals can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability almost all the metals they have malleability property but it is uh, highest for these 1b group elements they can be drawn into very 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 thin sheets they can be beaten into very thin sheets very thin sheets that is why they are used for minting coins and even they are used for making of ornaments also for the the main purpose main property used there it is um, ductility means they can be drawn into very thin wires of course all the metals can have this property of ductility almost but this ductility property is also highest for these 1b group elements because of that they can be drawn into very 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 thin wires so because of these two reasons they are used for making of uh, uh, these uh, coins that is why based upon this usage they have the they got this name coinage metals copper silver gold present in the 1b group are named as coinage metals they have the ability to convert into thin sheets that is a malleability property they can be drawn into very thin sheets even small quantity of this metal can be drawn into very big thin sheet with very thick very thickness very small thickness next metalloids the elements which are having the property of both metals and non metals are called metalloids yes there are some elements in between the non metals at the right side and the metals at the left side between these two there are certain elements in the staircase uh, type of position in the periodic table those elements can show 
can exhibit the properties of both metals and non-metals. Those elements which can exhibit the properties of metals and non-metals are termed as metalloids. So there are uh, seven elements in the periodic table which can show these properties of both metals and non-metals which are considered as metalloids. They are located in the groups 13, 14, 15, 16 and 17. If you observe here in the third year group that means in the third, uh, 13th group boron is present and in the fourth group silicon and germanium are 14th group. In the 15th group or 50th group arsenic and stevium. In the 16th group tellurium. In the 17th group or 7th year group astatine. So these seven elements are considered as metalloids because these elements can exhibit the properties of both metals as well as non-metals. Some of them example silicon are semiconductors and can carry electrical charge making them useful for electronic appliances like uh, calculators, computers and all other electronic goods. So in almost all the electronic uh, uh, appliances, they use uh, silicon chips. Even though silicon is a metalloid, it can conduct electricity through that. So it can conduct uh, less electricity than that of metals, but it will. That is why this is called semiconductor of electricity. Because of its special property, silicon is used for uh, making these all electronic appliances. And the chips we say electronic chips, they are made up of mostly silicon. Okay, that is a, so nowadays it has most importance silicon because almost all the electronic goods are made with this uh, silicon only because of its special property called semiconductor. Okay. Next, uh, representative elements. So, the elements present in the first group and uh, second group on the left hand side of the periodic table. So, here these elements, the elements present in the first two columns of the modern periodic table and uh, last out of last six columns, five columns like uh, from 3rd A to 7th A. Here 7th A will be. So these columns, totally here 5 columns and here 2 columns. These all 7 columns elements in the modern periodic table are called as the representative elements. So the elements present in the S block and P block except noble gases. Simply to say, we are telling you extreme left side two columns 1a and 1b group 1a and 2a group elements and a third a to 70a except 8a a total p block so these elements present in the s block and p block except these noble gases are called representative elements because their outermost shells are completely not completely filled they have incompletely filled outermost shells and they will try to become stable by completing their outermost shells. How do they can by uh, either by gaining of electrons or by losing of electrons. That is why these elements are almost all reactive elements. So the S block and P block elements except noble gases. Why? Because for the noble gases already the outermost shell is completely filled. Other than that in the S block and P block all the remaining elements they do not have completely filled outermost shells. They have incomplete outermost shells. So if they have incomplete outermost shells, those elements will not be stable. What they will do? They will try to get the outermost shell to be completely filled. How do, how do they can either by gaining of electrons or by losing of electrons or either by sharing of electrons. In somehow, they will try to complete their outermost shell with the electrons. That is why we say these elements, S block elements and P block elements are more reactive except noble gases. So they'll be always ready to participate in the chemical reactions. So we can say simply these are the elements which are responsible for the most of the chemical reactions. That is why we say these elements especially as representative elements. Okay, which elements are called representative elements? 
S block and P block elements except to 8th A group noble gas elements remaining all together considered as representative elements. What are S block elements again? The first two columns. Why they are called S block we are going to learn further. Now here let us see the first two columns. 1A group that is alkali metals and 2A group alkaline earth metals and from 3rd A to 7th A. 7th A group elements are called halogens and 6th A halogen uh, chalcogens, nicogens, carbon family. So the particular group elements are named with the first element of that group. Suppose if you see here uh, 13th column elements for those the first element will be boron. Isn't it? So these third A group elements are also called as boron family. And if you see next group that is the fourth A group elements. In these elements the first element as we know it is a carbon. So these elements of this fourth A are fourteenth column. What are those carbon, silicon, germanium these elements. So these elements are also called as carbon family. Okay. Now Alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, boron family, carbon family, and nicogens, chalcogens, and halogens. These all together they are called representative elements. Did you get why they are called so? Because they have incompleteness in their outermost shell. To make it completely filled, these elements will be always reactive and they will try to complete their outermost shell with the electrons, either by gaining of electrons or by losing of electrons or by sharing of electrons. That is why these will be always reactive and will be ready to combine with other chemicals to become stable. So uh, almost all the chemical reactions are responsible by these elements. That's why these are specially called representative elements. Got it? Next. Transition metals. So the elements present between these S block and P block elements. If you see in the periodic table, these 10 columns which are being at the middle of these all shown in the block color. These elements are called transition elements. The elements located in groups 3 to 12 of the periodic table are classified as transition metals. So if you see here, third B, this is third B group, third B to 4th B, 5th B, 8th B, till 8th B and here it will be started 1st B and 2nd B. These total 8 groups are there at middle. These 8 groups of elements with 10 columns are considered as transition metals. These are. So this is 3rd B group, 4th B, sorry 4th B, 5th B, 6th B, 7th B and you know these 3 columns, 8th, 9th, 10th columns in the modern periodic table all together will come under 8th, 8th group or 8th B group and this is a 1B group coinage metals and it is a 2nd B group. These 8 groups, B subgroups all together considered as transition metals transition metals are ductile malleable and conduct heat and electricity so almost these all are metals all the transition metal all in the name itself it is there these all are metals these eight uh, groups subgroup b elements all together are metals and they can they will be ductile that means they can be drawn into wires and they are malleable too they can be beaten into sheets for different purposes and they can conduct electricity also. Why they are called so transition metals? So these are in between highly reactive metals at the left side and highly reactive non-metals at the right side. So they are uh, transisting the property from highly reactive metals to highly reactive non-metals. In this way they are being at the middle of these two highly reactive metals and non-metals that is why they are called transition metals okay what are the transition metals 
the elements present in the third b2 second b groups in the modern periodic table the 10 columns which are at the middle of the s block and p block elements are called transition metals all are metals in this okay next lanthanoids we told at the starting to make it convenient sixth period elements 14 elements are written down at the bottom of the periodic table to make it convenient because actually these all elements these 15 elements should be in this stored place of this modern periodic table that is why it will be very lengthy form so it will be very lengthy to write so that's why it is also called long form of periodic table also but to make it convenient 14 elements from this place kept it down at the bottom of the periodic table these elements are called lanthanoids the elements which are there after lanthanum are called lanthanoids well, let us say about this the lanthanoids are the elements with atomic numbers 57 to 71 these metals are often called the rare earth elements also these lanthanoid elements are also called rare earth elements so here this uh, group generally we can say here in the third b group these elements are present so we have to understand one thing here these all elements in the lanthanoid column will come under sixth period only so these all are present in the sixth period only and at the same time these all elements will come under this third b group only because these all have the position in this part only so these all should be played in the place here so this is in the third b group now these all elements will come under third b group elements only third b group sixth period elements okay these are also these are existing in the earth crust very small quantity that's why they are also called rare earth elements also they are called the lanthanoids because they exhibit the similar chemical properties to lanthanum as they exist in the same period and same group in the modern period table and also they show similar chemical properties to lanthanum and they are existing after lanthanum so based on these two reasons these elements are specially called lanthanoids the elements after lanthanum and the elements which are exhibiting the same similar properties just like the lanthanum are called lanthanoids okay next uh, actinoids we see one more uh or in row elements down to lanthanoids in the periodic table which are written separately along with the lanthanoids so those elements are called actinoids so their place is here in the modern periodic table down to lanthanoids means in the seventh period after the second b group second second a group that in the third b group one place is provided for these all elements these all elements should be written in the same place actually but if it is written it becomes a 32 columns periodic table to make it convenient 14 elements kept written down separate down the lanthanoids these elements which are there after the actinum are known as actinoids the elements after the actinum are called actinoids and these all elements will exhibit the similar chemical properties with actinum so actinoids are the elements uh, with atomic numbers from 89 to 103 they are named after the first element in this series actinum so the elements uh, uh, which are there with actinum are called actinoids the actinoids group includes mostly man-made elements with only a few exceptions such as uranium and thorium very few elements like thorium and uranium are naturally existing elements but the remaining mostly remaining all elements are man-made elements or synthetic elements we know out of uh, these 118 elements around 92 elements are naturally existing elements in the earth in the nature remaining all elements are 
man made elements or synthetic elements means they are they are derived from the already existing elements by the radioactive chemical reactions so in this seventh period almost all the elements are man made elements or synthetic elements except very few like uranium and thorium okay next the lanthanoids and actinoids are together called as inner transition elements yes actually these elements are also should be along with the transition elements in the periodic table transition elements means we told the middle 10 columns elements from third b to second b which are existing in between s block and p block elements these are also should be along with them but because of the inconvenience to avoid the inconvenience writing they are kept separate these two uh, lanthanoids and actinoids uh, written at the bottom of the periodic table so these two horizontal rows together considered as inner transition elements okay these are also called f block elements why they are called so we are going to learn okay lanthanoids and actinoids together considered as inner transition elements okay these are the some special names from the modern periodic table some more we have and here some from the periods let us see now here typical elements the elements of third period are called typical elements as they summarize the properties of their respective groups yes as we are telling the elements present in a group are having almost similar chemical properties but to understand the chemical properties in convenient in the clear way better to consider the third period element of a group for example let us understand this by taking one example if you see first group elements in the first group the first element is a hydrogen if we consider this element for understanding the properties of this group elements we may not get clarity in that because hydrogen even though it is a first group element first of all it is not a metal isn't it whereas remaining all elements are highly reactive metals so by considering the first element of this first group we may not get the all clear properties of this group even the second element also second period element also that is lithium so there are some variations in the properties for the lithium from the remaining all that is why the third period element of this first group that is a sodium it is considered for, for understanding the properties of these group elements for describing the properties of these group elements in this way not only in the first group mostly in almost all the groups the third period element is considered for understanding the chemical properties to summarize the chemical properties of that group that is why these third period elements of every group are called as typical elements what are the third period elements sodium magnesium in the first and second year groups and next aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine argon these all elements which eight elements are called typical elements of the third period did you understand why they are called so because these elements of third period can summarize the properties of that particular group that respective group instead of taking the first or second period elements in a group it is better to consider the third element for summarizing the chemical properties of that common group elements that is why these third period elements are called typical elements for example as we told here sodium is a typical element of first group and while magnesium is a typical element of second group if we say uh, sulfur is a typical element of sixth a group in this way okay by considering these third group third period elements we can clearly summarize the properties of a particular group got it next next uh, bridge elements the typical elements of the third period are also called bridge elements as the division between the two subgroups a and b starts from these elements yes the division between the subgroup a and b will be started from third period 
isn't it in the earlier in the we have seen suppose if you see second group second group has two subgroups a and b but a uh, of uh, second a group contains these elements and uh, second b group contains these elements this is second b so till first period and second period second b group is not started after the magnesium only from the fourth period second b group is started so these uh, third period elements are being as bridge elements for the two subgroups a and b that is why these third period elements are also called as bridge elements so these are called typical elements because these elements are summarizing the chemical properties are properties of the particular group that is why they are called typical elements the same elements of third period are also called as bridge elements because these are being as bridge elements these are from the third period elements only the division between the second uh, subgroup a and b is being started if you see for the first group after sodium only after means after the third period element sodium only subgroup b is being started so these are the first a group elements these are first b group elements so after the third period elements only subgroup division is started a and b groups are started from the fourth period only till third period only subgroup a is existing isn't it in this way after these elements after the uh, third period elements only subgroups division a and b is being started hence these are called bridge elements so that way you can say in the second a period second group magnesium the third period element in the second group is magnesium is uh, acting as bridge element the properties of bridge elements are somewhat mixed properties of the two subgroups uh, a and b for example if you say in the second group the bridge element is magnesium so magnesium shows similar similarities with um, alkaline earth metals that is second a group elements and uh, even zinc group that is second b group elements properties also somewhat exhibited by magnesium so these uh, bridge elements are having this name because of this property also these third period elements are having some properties similarity in that of uh, subgroup a as well as subgroup b if you take here magnesium itself it shows the properties of alkaline earth metals that is the 2a group elements at the same time some properties are being similar with them second b group elements that is zinc group elements also that is why also these are called bridge elements okay third period elements are called typical as well as bridge elements so these are some special names from the modern periodic table okay one more digolon relationship in the periodic table an element of group uh, second group element shows in a particular in, a, in the second in a, sorry in the periodic table an element of second period any group an element of second period exhibits some similar properties with the next group next period element that is third period element this phenomenon is called diagonal relationship okay an element present in the second period of a group shows or exhibits certain similarities in its properties with the next group third period element this relation is known as diagonal relationship for example if you see here lithium it is in the 1a group second period this lithium is exhibiting some similarities with the uh, next group that is second a group element third period element this is magnesium these two are diagonally positioned in the modern periodic table and these two are having certain relation in chemical properties this relation is called diagonal relationship the elements of second period of a particular group will exhibit certain similarities in its properties with the next group third period element which are in the diagonal position in the periodic table so this uh, relation is also called diagonal relationship okay 
these are the special properties thank you for watching our video please subscribe our youtube channel aims today for latest updates and recorded videos